Ellie Roebuck, thank you for joining TalkSport. First of all, I want to take you back to that China game. Let's talk about it some more because obviously it was you know, great to watch. So how's the mood in camp now? How's everyone feeling about it now you've sat and analysed it? Yeah, the mood's great. Um, I think it's a great bunch of girls regardless. Um, but yeah, obviously there were some incredible performances, incredible goals and it's always nice watching watching from the side and goals are just going in the back of the net. Um, I think going into the game, we knew it was going to be a tough game. So coming out of it with six goals was super impressive and a performance that we're really proud of. I know you guys weren't listening to the outside noise too much, but obviously coming out of the group stage with a performance like that, does it give you even more confidence now against Nigeria? Yeah, definitely. I think Nigeria will face us with some different problems and obviously they're a great team um, so we're, we're going to prepare the best we possibly can to to face them and try and manage their threats which they have a lot they're they're a great team and they've proved that in their group stage as well um, but for us I think all three performances have been very different we've had to kind of pick out different skills and utilize different different things and hopefully that'll only put us in good stead going forward. I want to talk about you more specifically and one, the mentality of being a cold keeper in general, but the fact that, you know, you, you might not see the pitch. So how do you, you know, deal with that, being mentally strong, being a supportive teammate? But obviously as a footballer, you want to try and get on the pitch as well. Yeah, of course. Um, I think first and foremost, my aim here right now is to be the best support I could possibly be to Mary, make sure that she's going out there feeling confident, feeling in a good place and, and doing anything I can. And first and foremost, that sits above everything um, for the team. Um, but for me, obviously, I'm working every day as hard as I possibly can to be in the right headspace who I'm called upon. Um, also develop myself, use this time to, to really improve on things that maybe are my weakness and things that could help me moving forward, become a better goalkeeper. So that's kind of my mentality shift. Um, it's a great opportunity to work with top class players, top class coaches and really drain them of all their knowledge and everything they can do. For me, I'm staying out for the shooting. If I've got Alessi Russo striking balls at me every day, it's only going to make me better. So for me, I'm just trying to utilise everything I can, stay out on the training pitch. Yeah, literally just doing anything and everything really. Um, but first and foremost, making sure that the team's in a good place because that's my priority. I want the team to do well. And speaking of Alessia, we did a, an interview with her yesterday. She mentioned you're a bit of an early riser. I am. Uh, so in terms of that, obviously there's a lot of sights to see in Australia. So when you're getting up early, what, what are you doing with your time? Yeah, it's more of a routine thing, really. Um, it just helps that we're in Australia and it's beautiful in the mornings. But at home in Manchester, I'm waking up early because i got to walk my dog. Um, <laughs> you know, he can't take himself out. So I think it's just more like habit but it just helps here that I'm literally walk out the doorstep. I'm on the beach, go grab a coffee, literally take a walk. Um, the mornings are beautiful and it's probably actually on camp the only time that you have to yourself. So it's really nice. And for me, it's worked out well that I can call home at that point because my parents are just about to go to bed or whatever. So it's just about having that time to yourself and... For me, it just sets me up nicely for the day. And that time difference, obviously, it's quite a, a big thing. And as you say, speaking to f family and playing into that. So have you got yourself to a little bit of a routine with that now, just to make sure you get you know, yeah. that contact with home? Yeah, definitely. I think the minute you come on camp, you've got to find routine. You've got to find your own things that work. And that's how you get the best out of the environment, really. Um, so from day one, I kind of set that in stone and... To be honest, I do. I really miss my parents. They're actually on the flight out right now, so oh, amazing. that's perfect timing. But um, honestly, I've not missed home once <laughs> since I've been here. I'm loving life, so I can't complain at all. And you've been training, um, at the, you know, the Central Coast, and you've got that link now with um, the Mariners. And we were down there today at the event they did, and just I want to speak about the legacy, leaving all that kit behind, and yeah. and you know what that means, and how important is it for you girls? Obviously, you've got your job to do on the pitch, but obviously, legacy is a big thing after the Euros, and, and obviously now. And just wondering, you know, how important that is to you guys, and why? Yeah, I think as a team, we're people first. And that's how we want to want to come across. I mean, for me, like I say, in the mornings, walking around, I speak to anybody, so I, like it's easy for me. But 
I think it's just being able to be who we are within a community that's different to, to home, but also like finding your feet, getting to know the locals, just putting in that extra effort. Um, because as a group, that's what we want to want to be known for. Like naturally, that's who we are as people before football. Um, and then obviously the legacy of being able to leave like gym equipment behind and things like that. I think for me, they've allowed us to come into their into their home. Um, so it's just a small thing that we can give back. And the minute we we step foot here, the the hospitality has been incredible. Um, people can't do enough for you, and they've been super supportive. So it's like a support away from home, I guess. And the more we can interact with people, the more people, hopefully in the stadiums, they'll be cheering for us um, come game day. We've definitely found the Australians. They're taking you guys as your second team for sure. And, yeah. you know, speaking to the to the Mariners today, the manager um, and a couple of girls on the team, they were very grateful for the kit, obviously, just to let you guys know. And, yeah, yeah it's a wonderful nice thing you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, football, let's go back to football. Obviously, Nigeria. Talk me, you know, through that, going back to Brisbane, what you're expecting uh, from the game. Yeah, a tough game. Another tough, op tough opposition um, that'll throw something different at us again, um, as we've found with the other three nations that we've played. But for us, we'll just prepare as best possibly we can do. We'll highlight their threats and also highlight our threats. I think it's a lot about focusing on ourselves as a group. We've got such a talented group that can just go and showcase what they're about. And for me, I'm just super excited that, again, two top nations will be battling it out and it'll be a really, really interesting game. Um, hopefully one that reflects a successful outcome for us guys.